Hey, it's Jim. Um, I'm uh, following up with a air layer project I have working. I didn't uh, previously document that I was doing this one, but it um, is pretty interesting. So, and it worked out. So, I just wanted to document it here. So, you can see here that I've um, air layered this crepe myrtle Ooh, all the way up there. Air layered this crepe myrtle. Um, uh, some weeks ago, maybe maybe two months. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't remember when I did it, but you can see it's pretty substantial. It's got to be every bit of four inches across. Uh, it's got a like, neat little bend in it, and it forks up. I'm hoping that I can take it off somewhere here and get some taper. And uh, it's way up there though, so that's all gonna have to get cut. But crepe minerals are great for basically in the fall. You can just sort of hack them off and. Um, you know, and they all grow back. Some some down here called crepe murder. You just hack them off, um, and then they stay low, but then they branch out. Um, anyway, uh, so you can see it's got tons of roots. I'm gonna take it off now here, and then when I come back, I'm going to uh, show you what I do with it. Here it is here, I've taken the wire off the bag, and I'm just un undoing the bag here carefully. There's some ants in it uh, that I saw, but we have red ants down here. I don't think this will be red ants, but uh, just be prepared in case I get start getting bit. Uh, you can see here, the bag method is my preferred method. I've tried the uh, pot method with the bonsai soil. I just don't have as much, I haven't had as much success as I do with the, mostly the set it and forget it bag method here. So I find that a little bit uh, more useful for me. Anyway, all right, so I just wanted to document me taking that bag off and you can see it's got quite a few roots and I've had crepe myrtles uh, with much less root than this uh, take. So this will undoubtedly uh, be fine. So I'll come back when I'm ready to pot it up. Okay, after some lots of manhandling and sweaty work here down in Georgia, hot, muggy, gross. I have it in a shady spot uh, near some of my other trees here. Uh, which ought to be put back on the sun. I went away for two weeks and put them over here. I got to put them back out where they belong. Uh, but anyway, I had a pot pre-prepared with about halfway full of Svengo moss. Uh, next, these are some air layers I took off yesterday of a, um, ma a Japanese maple. I forget the variety. Uh, I took two air layers off and they're in the same spot. So. Uh, these will be, I'm just going to backfill this with uh, some more sphagnum moss and I'll probably put a little uh, pine bark on top just to hold in the moisture. And then down the bottom is a tray with no holes uh, that can soak up as much moisture as it wants. And then uh, all we got to do is get everything to the spring. And uh, I think this will be full of roots. And then I can, you know, hack it off, you know, somewhere down here and start the multi-year process of getting some good taper and getting a, a, uh, a bonsai that sort of fills out up here somewhere, but we'll see. I, I just mostly wanted to get rid of a giant crossing branch on a big crepe myrtle up front. So I thought I'd try uh, getting this and at certain angles, it's got a nice curve to it. It's a little flat on one side, a little round. It's kind of interesting. So we'll just see what happens. My whole thing is just, Rather than just cut it off and say whatever and throw it away, I just wanted to air layer it and see what happens and we'll see what, we'll just see. And uh, there we go. And I'll take one final little picture of when it's done. And uh, well, in the spring, hopefully we've got, keep lots of leaves on it. Uh, I pruned it up uh, quite a bit so that it didn't uh, have to do too much work. I'm a little worried, but it's a big, it's a big guy with a lot of roots and it'll be, have plenty of water. So. These crepe myrtles are like weeds down here in the south. So um, they will be fine, I think. So I've had multiple crepe myrtles I thought were dead. And then two weeks later, they've got uh, all kinds of sprouts on them. So, well, we'll just see. That's what it's all about. Just see what happens. And here's the final product. Um, so I put a bunch of sphagnum moss and then just a maybe two inch layer on top of just mostly pine bark um, with some topsoil but it's mostly pine bark and then uh, 
holding the moisture and then obviously the tray I talked about and I also put some cut paste on those bigger wounds and just for time reference uh, it's very late June uh, I forget the exact date to be honest 20 next Monday is July 4th so July 5th so 28th or something uh, 29th whatever it is anyway and I think I took the started the initial air layer maybe maybe mid-May so it was a pretty quick air layer I had another crepe myrtle that I had to leave on for a whole season even though I started last uh, May so it took a long time but then in the spring it uh, butted out and then uh, that one's turned out so well that I actually repotted it and moved it uh, somewhere else so it uh, it doesn't need this nursery shade treatment anymore uh, but this is going to stay here in the protected area probably for the rest of the season uh, keep an eye on it make sure it's watered uh, like a sprinkler here that waters it every morning and then um, yeah, so uh, hopefully everything's all right so we'll see uh, if nothing else I get a nice big crepe myrtle out of it um, hoping to get a good bonsai in four or five years um, we'll see but again we'll see see what happens all right, thanks a lot. Here I forgot to mention that I tie it to the fence to keep it stable. I don't want it to move around to damage the sensitive roots. Uh, that's the last thing I want to mention.